We are continuing with our first global Oncotone and it's already the nine hours we are live uh, and uh, we are uh, today uh, start, uh, trying to raise awareness or we are raising awareness about pediatric cancer and uh, trying to get funds, sponsorship for the pediatric cancer research and drug development, uh, specifically through the ALICE Fund. We are trying to support uh, Onco Euros Biosciences in their great work to develop pediatric cancer medications and to run clinical trials in pediatric oncology field. Uh, uh, we have uh, incredible guests from all over the world and without further ado, I'm going to introduce our next uh, wonderful speakers and guests. Uh, it's a great honor for me uh, to uh, introduce uh, Dr. Leo Kager, Dr. Jaume Mora, and Dr. Khaled Ghanem from three different uh, countries. Uh, Professor Kager uh, is my mentor, and I'm happy to say that because I learned so much from him, and I was fortunate to uh, get a training under his uh, mentorship. He's the head of uh, outpatient department at the at one of the leading uh, children's hospital in Europe, Santana Children's Hospital, and he has been, done uh, incredible research and work in the sarcoma field. Uh, and he was the vice president of the uh, he is the vice president of uh, cooperative osteosarcoma study group and uh world known pediatric oncologist um uh, dr joe memora uh the scientific director of, of another uh, great uh, pediatric cancer center uh, this time from barcelona a world known expert in the uh, neuroblastoma field um uh, and uh, they build a really wonderful um program around different cancers, uh, pediatric cancers at the Barcelona Center, and now is, uh, it is one of the leading uh, cancer center, pediatric cancer centers um, uh, globally. And uh, uh, my good, good friend, Dr. Khaled Ghanem from Syria, he is leading the Basma unit uh, in Syria, Damascus. Um, when he returned back, he started doing great work uh, uh, with very limited resources trying to uh, trying to uh, cure kids with cancer and he's going to show also what um, amazing work he has been doing there so uh, uh, i would like to start with uh, professor kager my dear mentor uh, uh, how he was doing in this pediatric oncology field and what is his opinion about the developments and his ideas about the pediatric drug development and uh, what he would like to share today with us on International Childhood Cancer Day. Yeah, hello everybody. Hello Georg, it's a great uh, to seeing you. Uh, I'm not your mentor, you're my mentor. Yeah, to be honest, uh, uh, just one publication that we had together on the review, uh, you were on the paper and that was cited 160 times. I've never had a review that was cited so, so high. So you, you're, you're uh, doing really a fantastic job. So um, I'm, I started at Santa Ana Children's Hospital uh, 30 years ago uh, to work in the field of uh, pediatric oncology. In the last 10 years, I also switched a little bit to hematology. So because it's the full punch of our, of our field. And in Vienna, we are lucky because we have the Children's Cancer Research Institute, which was founded 35 years ago. Uh, and I've uh, the privilege to be the head of this uh, research institute uh, and in the research institute we have about 30, uh, 30 uh, uh, people working there young uh, researchers from more than 35 countries so uh, this is and I think 
this is very important um, that you bring together the people in the field of pediatric oncology. We deal with extremely rare diseases um, and we have to learn uh, from each other. Uh, and what uh, Georg, we met first at the Open Medical Institute in, in Salzburg, the Salzburg seminars. Um, and I think uh, this is also an important part um, for uh, having uh, uh, bringing pediatric oncology forward. We have every second year there uh, these seminars uh, in Salzburg where people from the job, uh, people from Austria and from all over the world come together and share their, their knowledge. So uh, we learn a lot uh, at these uh, conferences and, and so on. So, but I do not want to talk too long because I think the other speakers want to talk uh, as well. Uh, um, or, or do you want me to, to continue? Please continue, we have time. And we'll okay. have the speaker time. and then we'll have some discussion. Okay, so uh, what I consider very important we have in, in the field of pediatric oncology. We have diseases, acute, for example, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Every drug you try in this disease, obviously it works, more or less. Uh, and then we have diseases like osteosarcoma. Every drug uh, we try in the last 30 years, uh, we had these drugs that we use now, MAP, uh, is the standard. They worked 30 years ago and we do not see any new uh, great signals from other drugs except for the DKIs. So, um, and, and this is, I, th I think, very important uh, in the field of, of, of leukemia. Uh, we do a lot of harm with our chemotherapy and, and, and I'm heading here also the late effects clinic. Um, so to see uh, osteonecrosis, we, we, we get reviews on uh, risk factors for osteosarcomas, but we have actually no treatment at all for, uh, um, for osteonecrosis, right? And um, so, and this is a, a real big burden for the patients. And here we have um, seen, uh, of course, uh, improvements with the um, uh, noil therapies, especially the immune therapies. Uh, and I think here it's very important that pediatric oncology comes closer to the adult pediatric, uh, uh, adult, uh, adult uh, uh, oncologists, because they cannot give that intense uh, chemotherapy. Uh, so they have to treat other, uh, uh, treat with other uh, modalities. And so we can learn from the adults, uh, for example, uh, AMLM3. Uh, uh, we have treated our patients very intensive. The ADELs have shown us that we just need two drugs to cure a patient with uh, uh, APL. And so, and on the other hand, in diseases like osteosarcoma, uh, it's very important that we have, like for with your AMOS one, uh, the international trial that we have. Um, such international collaborations. And for the first time, we have now in Europe the so called Foster Consortium uh, that is uh, fight osteosarcoma through European research. Uh, and we will, uh, we got funding and we will uh, open a trial with a DKI uh, soon. Uh, and this will be spread throughout Europe. So for the first time, we have a, a real uh, European um, osteosarcoma study. And I think here, this is very important. And um, um, it's my, my first thoughts um, on, on, on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kager. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, Dr. Dr. Mora. Please, could you share your ideas about the pediatric drug development and your experience in 
uh, I mean, you have been in this field for many years and you are leading uh, national trials. Uh, so your experience, where, where we are missing, what should we do to move it the field more forward? Well, good morning, everybody, and thanks, Gevork and colleagues, for uh, sharing uh, the thoughts for, from everybody uh, in this uh, very particular and small world where we, uh, we're dealing. Uh, where we're dealing with uh, very rare diseases uh, um, overall. And um, uh, my first thoughts, uh, my first things in these regards, as what you're asking me is, um, how long it has taken for us as a community to um, realize um, how important it is for us to take our own ways and stop following the tracks from the adult cancer uh, field. Um, we've been distracted for a long, long time and uh, mainly because the major pharm pharmacological developments and uh, pharmacy investments had been devoted to uh, adult cancer field, um, we thought and we have been lured by all these uh, new drugs and uh, new potentials that have been developed so massively for adult cancers that we were, um, you know, sort of, um, um, uh, that we just needed to follow their paths and we would find the right answers for our patients. And that has proven to be wrong and, um, and unsuccessful, basically. So as you know, it is well recognized now that very few drugs have been approved for the last 20 years for pediatric cancer specifically. And this is a clear proof that we've been very wrongly um, uh, uh, doing the, the, the things, right? So you, we ourselves are responsible, are responsible for this failure, um, uh, as opposed to the adult cancer field where um, dozens uh, or, you know, many, many dozens of drugs that have been uh, developed and approved for um, the, the adult cancer. We thought that, you know, breast cancer drugs, uh, anti-EGFRs and so on, would work exactly the same for our patients with osteosarcoma otherwise, and that has proven to be wrong. So the first thing that we had to realize is that we need a specific research for our uh, very rare tumors. And the reason why children and adolescents develop cancer has nothing to do with uh, the, what we understand as adult cancer, which is the um, aging-induced uh, cancer, right? So um, carcinomas have nothing to do with uh, children's cancers. And therefore, the drugs that they have developed for um, even target uh, therapies that might work for uh, uh, lung cancers, for instance, with EGFRs or uh, ROS or uh, ALK mutations, uh, certainly do not have the same um, the same responses or the same efficacy when we um, identify an ALK mutation neuroblastoma, for instance. ALK mutations have nothing uh, to do, uh, like uh, for uh, lung cancer um, in neuroblastoma. You can have a benign uh, or low grade, um, uh, low or favorable uh, neuroblastoma with an ALK mutation. Um, so the significance of those findings are completely different and we should be doing our own research to understand uh, our tumor types. Having said that, and I think now we, for the last 10 years or so, we realized that we have to perform our own things. Um, we started doing our own stories and certainly this takes much longer. These are much rarer diseases. The amount of money that is invested is so much lower. Um, we are pro probably uh, less smart than uh, adult cancer field uh, investigators, maybe, who knows? But the fact is that it takes a long, long time for us to uh, bring a new discovery into a patient's life. For instance, anti-GD2 antibodies, which have been uh, clearly successfully proven to increase that uh, survival of uh, children with high-risk it has taken uh, over 30 years 
of research to finally end up in uh, FDA approvals. And not only that, but there are a lot of um, regulatory body um, difficulties to for us to get uh, our drugs approved. So we have lots of difficulties on our own. And that's the reason why we need to advocate for specific research, for specific funding, for a specific uh, career of investigators, and for a real focus on what uh, children's tumors are, so we can develop specifically drugs that can help them and not only rely upon adult cancer developments, which have proven to be the wrong track. Thank you very much, Dr. Mora. So uh, certainly, uh, I mean, uh, kids, uh, as we like to say in pediatric uh, oncology world, kids are not small adults. So, uh, and I, I think uh, we need to be more like proactive in advocating for pediatric cancer dedicated research that it's not like an uh, appendix to adult studies or the fund when the funding comes it's not an appendix to uh, like adult investigations but rather it's a specific it's specifically dedicated to pediatric cancer um, and um, uh, I'd like to give the floor also to Dr. Ghanem and then we'll have uh, some time for a few more thoughts. Uh, uh, Dr. Ghanem is working in incredibly uh, limited, uh, uh, resource limited area, but uh, I know he is doing wonderful work and he has uh, some great results even with the, the small uh, resources what he has. Uh, when we are talking about the develop, uh, I mean about the drug development, about developed countries that we need uh, to like boost from 85 to 100 percent. In other parts of the world, the reality is totally different. When we are talking about the anti-GD2 therapies, which is so important, but in some of the parts of the world, uh, like the medications, which are like 50 years old are challenging to get. So we need to have this perspective as well. And I would like to ask Dr. Ghanem to talk about this as well. And uh, also, I think uh, when we are advocating for the new research, we need to make sure that we put on the agenda that low middle income countries are included and that the disparity is not going to widen more. Uh, Khaled, I think we lost him. Okay, uh, until he comes, uh, in your in Europe, he lost connection. I think in Syria, the connection is a problem. Uh, before he comes, um, uh, one question to you. W what do you think? What else? I mean, this is the global oncoton. We are trying to get people together to advocate, to uh, try to move the agenda forward. What else on the practical note? Like tomorrow, what else we, we will be able to do that we move at least like one meter uh, forward. Is there anything right now we can do in that regard? Who would like to be first? Professor Kager, I think you want to. I can, yes. So uh, what to do to first? So um, I mentioned before uh, at the, the example with ALL and adults, uh, not to get the wrong opinion, I do not uh, I'm fully, I fully agree with Dr. Mora um, that we, we uh, in, in, in the field of solid tumors, etc., it's not easy to learn from adults. But in certain diseases, um, it's important also to have the view on the adults to, to make this, this point. Uh, we do in this since 35 years just research at the CCRI here um, in at, at uh, on, on the, the, to get an idea on the path mechanisms uh, and uh, to get an idea um, on uh, uh, which drugs will work uh, in certain uh, patient, pediatric patients so our research is just focused on on children and young adults and 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 not an adult uh, and, and and not an adult uh, adult oncology so um and 
of course, the big um, new um, things are the drug screens for that we have for certain patients, certain drug screens. So uh, we have for sometimes, so generally spoken, um, the big platforms uh, do not bring the big uh, um, results that we have expected. We wanted to see um, that that works in every patient. Of course, this is illusion. But uh, going with uh, a mechanistic model to have drug screen in place, uh, sometimes you see fantastic results uh, for single patients. And I think um, improving these models uh, and, uh, and and improving this uh, track screen platforms uh, in pediatric oncology uh, will bring us forward in the next few years, I'm sure. Thank you very much, Dr. Gager. Um, I mean, CCRI is a really an incredible organization and uh, uh, I'm sure uh, it has a lot to do with many others. Uh, uh, Dr. Ghanem is back. Uh, let's give him a, a floor and then Dr. Mora will uh, ask for the question I said. Khaled, please. Uh, Khaled, can you hear us? Uh, I think we are having some problems again with the, with the voice. Let's try to correct the voice. Maybe Dr. Mora will answer the question and then uh, We'll come back again to Dr. Gunnan. Sure. Um, well, uh, there are so many different uh, variables that we can entertain here uh, to respond to your question. But um, I, I think it's important to realize today and highlight the fact that the most important prognostic factor uh, nowadays to cure a child with, neuro with uh, uh, cancer worldwide is, um, you know, the uh, uh, postal code. So where the, the patient and the family lives, right? So the inequalities in uh, access to cancer care are huge. Well, I'm not discovering anything novel to anyone here, but uh, I think we need to highlight such, right? Um, uh, it is well known that at the CCRI in Vienna, for instance, they can cure um, close to, you know, 80% uh, of all the children with cancer, most likely, or even higher for the leukemias. Um, in uh, Latin America, for instance, where we've been working very actively, the median uh, survival for children with ALL doesn't reach uh, 50%, for instance, and it's much lower. And in China, it's been reported recently 54% survival Hello, rate for ALL, Sorry, right? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So, yeah, if you hear me, yeah, I can deliver my message. I'm very sorry for the connection issue here uh, about electricity. One moment, Dr. Mora will finish and we will give you the voice, okay? So, if you hear me, my message is very simple here that um, we all want to uh, support children with cancer uh, all over the world. However, children with cancer in the uh, crisis uh, area, especially in some countries in our uh, in our region uh, uh, they need uh, actually more support than other uh, people all over the uh, when uh, in countries where there is no crisis or there is no war we all know that the uh, the burden of childhood cancer on families and children is uh, is uh, uh, known to be uh, to change the lives of, the, of these families, to change the physical, the emotional, the social uh, life of the patients and the families. However, in crisis area uh, where uh, there is an economic crisis or there is war, this burden significantly intensified to, the, to a level that sometimes the patients or the families cannot tolerate this burden. So, I mean, our, uh, our message from areas under crisis like Syria, like other uh, uh, countries in the world, that please support these children uh, and uh, make your effort to uh, have initiatives uh, very specific to children with cancer in crisis area. 
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ghanem. Yes, especially in crisis area, it's many times and I can, I mean, echo you because uh, we were living in that and we have, have been living in this area uh, as well and I know what it is. Uh, yeah, we hear, heard your voice, uh, message very well. Thank you very much. I know you had uh, a huge connection problem and the connectivity is not that good, but thank you very much that you found the time uh, to connect. Uh, Dr. Mora, sorry, we interrupted you. you. Please continue. I think you were talking about the same what uh, what Dr. Ghanem was telling about. Exactly. Um, it's uh, well uh, well taken and very pertinent. What our colleague from Syria is just uh, highlighting: the fact that children with cancer can be cured, um, uh, but it mostly depends on you know the socio-economical um, environment. And certainly, uh, crisis or wars uh, are, you know, the worst uh, case scenario where life is just a, a threat, um, not only for the cancer, but by many other reasons. So, all my admiration to the uh, colleagues worldwide that are struggling with families and patients in such terrible conditions. Having said that, um, it is also very important as a community that we need to realize that we have the knowledge and the tools and the drugs because they are mainly very old drugs and quite cheap drugs to cure many, many children with cancer. It's all a matter of um, skills, developing locally the uh, uh, expertise and uh, providing the right drugs for everybody to at least access first line therapy uh, at least for the most uh, uh, easily curable, easily curable uh, children's tumors. And this is why the um, OMS has launched this global prog program where we are uh, intended to cure, or at least to get uh, up to the 60% cure rates worldwide for the, all those six uh, very common and least, uh, you know, difficult to treat uh, children's cancer. So. Um, Regardless of where we are, we should be uh, communicating, helping each other, and providing the resources for having more and more families, um, you know, able to cure. Because we know how to cure ALL, we know how to cure a Wilms tumor, we know how to cure effectively a retinoblastoma, a low-grade glioma, and so on and so forth. So there's no excuse for us as a community to to let these families uh, out of the real opportunity for cure. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mora, Dr. Kager, and Dr. Ghanem, uh, that you found the time in this very busy day for all of us to join our this discussion and, um, and uh, sharing your ideas about the problems we are facing. Um, thank you very much and uh, have a great day and we are moving to the next session thank you thank you all thank you bye 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 now thank you bye